Hello, this is your National Weather Service in New York, New York office. You're used to these narrated briefings being for upcoming significant weather events, but with this one, we're going to take a quick uh, retrospective at the March 2nd and 3rd uh, snowfall event that really wasn't, turned out to be pretty minor in comparison to what some of the forecasts were uh, several days out. Um, on Friday, for instance, uh, February 28th, we were forecasting um, a decent amount of accumulating snow across the area. That didn't turn out uh, to be the way it was on Monday, at least, with only some light snow across the area. So why exactly did that happen, and uh, where does uncertainty come into the forecast process? Um, we'll take a quick look at that. So starting off, um, this is an image from Friday, February 28th, of uh, satellite water vapor imagery and the pressure pattern, these lines you see here, uh, the pressure pattern tens of thousands of feet above ground level. And why do we take a big look at this picture first? You know, aren't we interested in what's going on or what will be happening across the tri-state area in a few days? Well, to figure out that, first you want to take a look at uh, what's going on in the big picture, where the moisture is aloft uh, tens of thousands of feet above the ground level, where the jet streams are. We can see that well with this imagery uh, where the storm systems are because it's a loft that controls the uh, the weather that occurs at the levels below all the way down to the surface where we experience the weather uh, where we see our, our surface air masses cold and warm air our fronts our storm system so on and so forth so what we're looking at here again was friday february 28th big upper level low swirling around uh, centered across eastern canada the hudson bay uh, this is controlling where we see our really cold air in our northern latitudes and uh, helping to unleash the cold air down to the south across the midwest and into the northeast u.s uh, and we see the jet stream associated with it shooting across the northern u.s at the same time, we have this strong low pressure system that was about to come ashore in California, provide plenty of rain out there, uh, and a southern jet stream associated with that shooting into the southwest U.S. and out to the east. And it was the interaction between the two, this northern uh, jet and this upper level low, and the southern jet and the moisture uh, with this system from the Pacific heading to the east and also some Gulf moisture that would set the stage, it looked like, for the most likely scenario being uh, significant accumulating snow. Uh, across the tri-state area as we moved into the early portions of the week, March uh, 2nd and 3rd. Of course, it didn't turn out exactly that way, so why don't we take a look at some of the uh, forecast guidance we had on Friday and to show you what looked to be the most likely scenario. So we bring in this next loop, at least. It starts off with water vapor imagery, and then it switches over to um, a map, again, at the same level we were looking at before, kind of at the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. But now we're looking at something called uh, uh, vorticity, basically, a vorticity map here. Uh, and again, it helps to pinpoint where we see our storm systems. So we'll let it loop around one more time, and we'll start off with that water vapor imagery. This was Friday again. And then as we went through the weekend and into the early portions of the week, what looked to be the most likely scenario was the two would interact, this big upper level low and that storm system coming out of the west and little waves of low pressure out in front of it, uh, right in a good spot across the area. You'll see as it comes east, um, they would interact to produce accumulating snowfall across the area. We would have just enough cold air pushing in from this big upper level low and then the moisture coming east and the support from this wave of low pressure moving east and these little waves out in front of it uh, and we would see snowfall across the area again that didn't work out the way it was so uh, let's uh, go a little more in depth to what was going on at the surface and really clarify what what happened So again, here's this uh, this chart of vorticity, as we called it. So basically, pinpointing where we have our, our waves um, as we headed into Monday. Again, the interaction across the area between the northern jet and then the southern stream, helping to promote snow across the area. This would set up a stationary front, the way it looked at the time, uh, just to our south, with the cold air mass. Uh, to the north of that stationary front cold enough for snow however we would be close enough to this front uh, that low pressure riding along the front would focus an axis of heavy snow across the area so we'd be in sort of the sweet spot if you will where we'd have enough cold air yet be close enough to the front that we could see heavy snow uh, across our area now of course what happened 
everything shifted south just a little bit, such that uh, down closer to D.C., for instance, that was where the heavier snow was located. So how did we get that, that stationary front shifted just a little bit to the south? Well, basically, the flow out of the, the northern jet was quite powerful and the waves riding around it such that remember the upper levels of the atmosphere is where we're controlling uh, what happens at the surface and lower levels it was really pushing down on the northeast uh, u.s and it was helping to really move this colder air farther south such that it just took a little bit of moving the stationary front farther south that arctic front that moved through farther south that uh, focused the heavier snow farther south we were plenty cold again um, for snow just now we were on the northern fringe of the precipitation uh, so when you go back and you look at water vapor imagery back on friday and you and you look at it in the perspective of what i was just showing you can see where uncertainty tends to find its way into the forecast sometimes we have all these waves of low pressure uh, riding around this big upper level low uh, this low out to the west coming ashore and in other places too on water vapor imagery farther out to the east and uh, you see this big jet shooting north uh, well into alaska past alaska and then down uh, helping to unleash the cold and it's all these small scale interactions that happen over the process of several days and down the line can move a little stationary front that's a focus for precipitation uh, farther south by 100 150 miles um, so again we saw a most likely scenario that that front was going to be close enough to the region Region, that this uh, northern stream wouldn't push down so hard on the area that uh, moved too far away but it turns out as we got closer to the event uh, things kept trending in that direction and sure enough uh, it turned out we were on the northern fringe of of the precipitation across the area uh, and so now you see where at least some of that uncertainty can come into the forecast um, again we'll provide a most likely scenario for a forecast uh, uh, based upon our analysis and our guidance uh, but at the same time we'll give uh, these lower potential scenarios uh, we'll, we indicated on Friday for instance that if the front were stronger um, and that this uh, air mass this cold air mass were stronger it could push the front farther south and we wouldn't see as much snow across the area and that's what took place uh, are we saying that to cover every single basis that's out there? No, of course not. But if we do see the potential for other scenarios, we want to let you know that uh, as well. So you have a most likely scenario, which is what you can expect, but the lower potential scenario too, uh, which is what um, you could also be or should also be prepared for uh, as well. So again, we would like to get the most likely scenario forecast, uh, have that take place every single time, but the state of the science is such that uh, we're analyzing this big fluid atmosphere that sometimes it doesn't work out uh, exactly that way. Uh, so anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, look at the March 2nd and 3rd event and the forecast process behind it. And, and uh, hopefully in the future we'll be able to do uh, more reviews like this. Thank you.